volume turned up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we're okay. We're going live. I'm going to give it a few minutes for people to know that we're online. Um, happy Flag Day to everybody. I've got a flag out in my backyard I can see from where I'm standing, and I'm always excited about that. We've got a couple people already coming on. Uh, all right. Good morning, Cora. Good morning, Mark. Um, it's good to see y'all this morning, even if it's just your little pictures. If you would, tell me, somebody give me a feedback on the uh, volume, if you would. I can actually see the comments this morning. Good morning, Tina. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Crystal. All right, yeah, somebody give me, somebody give me a little feedback on the volume. Do you see anything yet? All right, thank you, Cora, for that. We got good volume, that's the main thing this morning. While we're waiting for everybody to get on with us this morning, uh, just wanna give you a couple of announcements. Uh, I've talked to the, the hotel, uh, the Hilton Garden. We can't start there, as we said last week, we can't start there again until August, the first Sunday in August. But I was able to find uh, a, another hotel, the Comfort Suites, which many of you remember is a place we have gone to in the past, right down the street from the Hilton Garden. Uh, and so I have been able to arrange two different meetings there. Uh, one is uh, coming up, what's the last Sunday in June? Uh, you know, uh, we got to, anyway, we're, we're gonna meet there the last Sunday in June. Uh, next weekend is actually Father's Day, so we're not gonna, we, we couldn't, they had something else going on. Good morning, Ann. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna meet at the Comfort Suites right down the street from the Hilton Garden on the last day, 28. which is the 28th of June. The 28th of June, and then the, what is the, the 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 other date? I think it was July the 19th. It's like the third Sunday in July. Uh, then we have one other uh, availability there at that hotel, which is which is uh, July the 19th. So I will, I'll be putting out uh, an email and adding it to um, our Facebook page. But uh, for those that, you know, that feel like that we've, you know, we're missing being able to get together and I know that there's some that may feel uncomfortable with that. Good morning, Minda. Uh, that we may, you know, that there's no pressure as far as whether you come or not. We're still gonna go, we're still gonna have the live stream, but I just thought we would try uh, to have one meeting um, uh, each month for the next couple of months. The, again, that's June the 28th and July the 19th at the Comfort Suites. And then the first Sunday um, in August, we'll be back at the Hilton Garden. Um, and so I'm letting everybody say good morning to everyone, but uh, that's just the announcements that we have right now. Um, did you want, Deborah, did you want me to mention about the Anything to do with the women's meeting, or do you want to just? Um, uh, we can Kim. tell them we're meeting on the 25th of June at Kim's. Okay, also, Deborah was saying that the, the women uh, are getting together live uh, at Kim, Kim's house in um, close to Galveston. Most of you have been there. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Melissa Briscoe. Uh, most of you have been there, so that's going to be the 25th, Thursday, the 25th. At 6:30, uh, so they're 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 going to get together uh, again uh, live, and again if you feel if you feel comfortable with that, great. We're just we're in that kind of threshold where we're trying to do what's proper and prudent, um, and uh, respect the authorities and all that. So we're trying to to to, to go that direction, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna try that. So we'll we'll have that announcement coming out by email as well. So if you know someone that may not be listening or doesn't have connection here, please let, uh, let them know about those two dates, um, <clears throat> one in June and one in July, and also about the women's meeting uh, in June. That's June the 25th, right? Yes. Okay. Well, very good. It's, it's uh, good to see everybody this morning. Uh, and uh, 
What I'd like to do um, this morning is, this is June 14th, uh, 2020, and the title of the message this morning is, The Word Became Flesh. And uh, I just, I just have been looking at something um, regarding the Word this week, and I, I just would like to, to give maybe some new understanding concerning what we, what we would call getting into the Word. Good morning, Lana. Uh, so, uh, if you would, it's not in your notes, but it turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, or in your technology, or whatever you're using. I, I hope everyone has a hard copy that they use in their Bible study prayer time, because the Holy Spirit wants to convey the truth to us, and sometimes uh, as he's relaying something out of the Word, it's just so much easier and better if you have a highlighter and a pen, and you're not afraid to mark in your in your Bible, because there's notes. I just I still can't give up my uh, old uh, copy, hard copy here, even though it's worn out because it just has all my notes in there. So, anyway, uh, <clears throat> chapter five of Ephesians, uh, verse one says, "Therefore, and we know if there's a therefore, we need to know why it's there, what it's there for." Uh, it says, uh, "Be imitators of God as dear children." Now, you know, of course, much of the much of the teaching that I was that I grew up with, and much of the teaching that I've been around for much of my Christian life, uh, had to do with uh, interpreting that in a way that that I think was really a mistake. At least it was for me, and I hope I hope you understand what I'm saying here. That uh, the the way we can Im the way we imitate God or our ability to imitate God has to do with the rest of that verse, as dear children. And uh, I've heard a lot of, you know, a lot of ministry, a lot of teaching that comes out of this, chapter 5. But the first four chapters of Ephesians is where Paul be begins to relay to us who we are, which is sons of God by faith in Christ, and, and uh, giving us an identity and a revelation of sonship, a revelation of sonship. And so it's by that, for those first four uh, good morning, Fran. I can see that you're on this morning. Good morning, Wayne. The first four chapters, Paul is is, is telling us, uh, giving us that in that understanding of sonship, and then he says, "Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children." So, unless you know, unless your understanding is that you're a dear child of God, that you're not just uh, um, a son, but you're a beloved son or a beloved daughter. Until you understand, see, our, our imitation of God comes out of who we are. Uh, and I wrote this note down as I, as I was looking at that. This has been kind of added uh, this morning as I was just praying about this message this morning. But never, never allow your doing to determine your being. Um, but always, always uh, allow your being to determine your doing. Who you are is what, we, is what should be coming out of us. It's who we know we are. We should never allow the, the doing part of our life to, de, to make a determination as to our being, who we are. The, the, the doing comes out of who we are. And so it's so important for us to understand and walk in that truth. So um, I just felt like that, that he wants us to understand, uh, and again, we're, we're continuing our, our uh, under, uh, greater understanding and going from uh, living We've got your chart, uh, if you've got your chart handy, living in the realm of son, sonship where the, we abide in the house forever, this upper part, the three realms, the body, the soul, and the spirit. Uh, here's the veil, and again, we have passed from this life of death down here, we've passed from death to life. Now we have a sonship, we're seated with him in heavenly places, all those things that Paul told us in Ephesians. Is so important to understand, and then then our ability to imitate God comes out of that identity, it comes out of our sonship that's, that the Holy Spirit is giving witness to in our hearts uh, by by His work in us, and so that's that's an important thing because we're going to look at something a little bit different here. Uh, the uh, the first in the first section of your notes, we can look at go ahead and turn to John chapter one, John chapter one. Um, John chapter 1 um, 
We've got another little thing that you can add. If you have a copy of your chart with you, you can add this. These three, I always add three. There's three realms, and I've add, I add three different, uh, three things. Uh, the, the material world that we live in, in the body, uh, is, 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 uh, is made up of particles. The particles of matter, you know, they're made up of particles. So if you would, you can put particle down at the bottom here. And in the second realm, in the, in the soul realm, um, there, is a, there's, there are waves, they call them waves. I didn't realize when I taught chemistry and physical science and physics for, in high school for seven years, I didn't understand that I was, I didn't realize at the time I was actually gonna be understanding more about uh, the word of God, the power of God and the creation of God through, the, through his, uh, like he says in Romans, through he's, he's made himself clearly known through his creation. And so we have, we have particles and then waves, but everything in the upper realm, which uh, the particles and waves come out of, is the word. Word is the, the, uh, what you would put in the top realm here. Uh, God actually said that he, put his, he, he elevated his word above his name. So word is the power of God. See, word is the power. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So everything down here came out of this. And then it says, and God said, let there be light. Started with light. Let there be. And upon that word, that word, which is that realm that we're operating in now, it's his word that we're operating in and through, through us. This is the, this is the way that this, uh, this operates up here. So we've got particle, we've got wave. The wave is, even light demonstrates this. There's a process called a dual duality of light there's it's sometimes it acts like a like a, a wave and sometimes it acts like a particle and I think the light the revelation of Jesus coming Jesus is the word uh, and this word Jesus became flesh so the word is the, the is what holds this all together the word of God so uh, everything down here comes out of God's word comes out of his word so uh, I want to I want to uh, talk about that a little bit more this morning as we as we go through this because uh, Jesus again in the parable of the word uh, the sower he sowed the word uh, and we're going to talk about there at the end so I'm not going to go into much of a detail but if when it falls on good ground it falls upon our heart this good this good word the word of God the word of God falls in uh, when we hear faith comes by hearing believing comes by hearing and it, when it falls on good grounds, it says that there's that it some it produces thirty fold results, sixty fold, and a hundred fold. And that's um, again the the three realms here. Uh, the traditional, if we're if we're just connected to the to the to the uh, par, the particle part, the the, the seen world, uh, and that's all we understand. That's all we want to know. There's no condemnation. That's fine. Uh, that good that good ground of our heart re produces salvation, redemption. Um, and so we're going to talk about that a little more. But see, I, what we want, all of us, we want to have a hundredfold return of God's word in our hearts, to, fall on, to make our hearts such good ground that we allow the fullness of, that, of his word to bring us into a hundredfold relationship, into that, in that hundredfold relationship. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit this morning. Uh, I'm so thankful that the word became flesh, that he became as we were so that we could become as he is now. I want you to, I want you to realize that uh, as we're looking at John chapter one here, he, he became as we were so that we could become as he is now. And that's, you know, first John, I know Susan's watching, first John four. So as he is, so are we in this world. So that's what he came down for. He came down not to show us how to do better. He came to replace us, to allow us to have himself in us, to live uh, in that victory of, of, of being in, seated with him in heavenly places. Our citizenship is in heaven. We are with him. We are one spirit with him, one flesh with him. And so the word is what, is what causes that, that realm we call heaven to operate that's what it operates on is the word and so uh, if you look at John chapter 1 um, verse 14 it says and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory 
the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So when Jesus as the, came into this world as the Word, he came bringing grace and truth. He came bringing a, a, a new revelation, a new word from heaven. And when we look at, look at Hebrews again, see now God's speaking from heaven through Jesus. He's not speaking from earth through, through the uh, things written on stones. Uh, he's, he's, the word now made, was made flesh. It came, he came and dwelt among us. And so if you look at the, the question of this, according to the context of this, what are some truths that, that are uh, concerning the word? If you look at verse uh, 1 of chapter 1 of John's gospel, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, he was in the beginning with God. So Jesus is the Word of God made manifest to us on the earth. And look at verse 3. All things were made through him. So Word, Word produced Everything in this, these two realms here, in, our, in the soul realm, in the spirit, in the, in the flesh realm, in the body realm, everything, uh, all things down here were made. All these, these, uh, the, the created unseen realm and the created seen realm, they were all made through him. Through who? The word, made through Jesus, the word. And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So this light concerning him being the word, bringing that word of grace and truth to us, depositing that word, his word himself, on the good ground of our heart to produce, as uh, those that are being born, born from above, producing a 30, 60, and 100 fold return. Uh, and that's what he goes on to say. Uh, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There's a, there's a lot of, uh, the, the darkness is trying to dispel the revelation of Jesus as the Word. Uh, his revelation of what he came and what he did and what he accomplished. Uh, verse 9, uh, uh, it talks about John the Baptist, that, he was, that Jesus is the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. So when a man is born into this world, through the first Adam, uh, there is a light now. That light, that wave particle duality of God's word is the lamp. It's the light. It's the lamp into our feet. It's the light that brings revelation of Jesus as the word into our heart. Uh, it says that uh, he was in the world and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. It didn't recognize him. didn't see it because blessed are your eyes because they are seeing this truth. There's, that, that you, it, you've been able to see this mystery, which is Christ in you, that he came into the world to bring himself into our, into our life. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Not servants of God, but children of God. Servanthood comes out of sonship, true servanthood. Uh, that's why Paul referred to himself as a bond servant. It was a willing thing. He, he, he nailed himself to the doorpost of, the, of God's house as a willing bond servant. So his servanthood came out of his sonship. Um, become children of God to those who believe in his name. See, the, the, the word has only one response in our, in our life, one necessary response, and that's just believe. Simply believe as a child. It's believing it. There's nothing to do to get it. You can't fast to have it. You can't. You hear it, and the heart, the Holy Spirit is in our heart, giving witness to the truth, grace and truth that Jesus came as uh, the Word that became flesh. Uh, and when we simply believe in His name, and so as a result of believing His name, look at verse 13: "Who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh." So this is not something you or efforted yourself into. Uh, but it came uh, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of, of God. See, this was God's will that you would be conformed to the image of his son. Born from above, born by the spirit, born of the word. See, the word uh, through the Holy Spirit and you're believing the truth concerning God, God sending his word into the earth through Jesus. When you believe that, he caused you to be, uh, have a brand new DNA that's exactly like Jesus. 
and he caused that new birth to occur. You, been, you, you became born from above, and so as he is, so are we in this world. So it's so important for us to understand these truths that come out of the Word. See, the Word. Uh, Jesus said when he was being tempted, um, he said uh, that when the enemy, and I think this is important because we're all fighting this. We're all, we've been, we've been trying to exalt I'm sorry, but this is the way I live. You, this may not be something that happened in your life, but we've been taught and we've been trying to exalt our faith uh, instead of exalting his word. Because see, as we exalt his word, as we exalt Jesus, who is the word made manifest in the flesh, the word of God, what God says, Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say. So that word is the power, that's the, that's the substance of, of the unseen heavenly realm, the realm that's, that everything else came out of. So he wants us to understand uh, and walk in that revelation. He wants us, to, so if we're, if, we're, um, if we're trying to produce something by our faith, then we're still in that soul realm, we're still in that realm. Our, uh, I want my mind to be tra transformed because my heart is already conformed. See, I'm conformed to the image of his son. My heart, the truth, grace and truth abides in us. He abides in us in the person of Jesus Christ. We're one spirit with him. Uh, and so we need to replace, try to be, begin to replace uh, a life where we're living bottom up and start living from top down. We're not, we shouldn't be living body, soul, and then spirit. We should be living spirit, soul, and body. The word should be having free course into our soul and down and, in, and into the flesh. And this is an example of, of what uh, communion is all about. Communion is the, the life uh, of, of God in Jesus Christ up here that is fixed and permanent, the covenant. Uh, when we partake of co communion, we're taking, we're, taking, we're taking of his word that comes down into our soul and we believe the word, the word, that came, became flesh that we're actually it says if you eat my my bread and uh, my body and and drink my blood you have life in you so the life is coming from the word not from our practicing the 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 communion it's it's the communion communion is the communing with the word of truth that brings life into our soul and then into our body so he wants us to live this way if we know god but we don't think he's for us if we have a, if we had an, an idea that he's not for us, then we have to figure out some way to try to make him for us. So we'll, you'll live your whole life from the bottom up, trying to approach God, trying to get something from Him, trying to get the Word to manifest in us, instead of knowing that the the Word is actually living in us and letting it manifest into our soul and into our body. We've got it. We've got. We've been going at it the wrong the wrong way, upside down. And so the enemy wants to make you feel like that even though you may know God, he doesn't, he's not happy with you or he's not, so you're going back to living down here, uh, trying to make what's up here happen in your life. He wants you to live up here and let what's happen. You know, when Jesus sent them, on, on, when he, after his resurrection, he sent them, he said, I want you to go first to Jerusalem, then to Judea, then to Samaria, then the outer parts were. So we'll look at it this way. You can write this on your chart as well. This is Jerusalem. We are, we are making the word work in us first. See, we're making, we're Jerusalem. We're the possession of peace comes in here. Possession of peace comes from a realization of the word, the word that's settled in heaven, the word that, that out of everything else has come out of. So Jerusalem is and it is in that example, I'm sorry, it's a, I'm trying to use examples to give us a little better understanding. But So then we take what we have in Jerusalem and we begin to take it into our realm of, of, of Judea, or we're, the people we may know, and then to Samaria and to the outer parts of the world. It begins to flow out of us. See, salvation begins to come out of us through the Word. See, the Word uh, has to has, begins to produce in us as we believe it. See, the Word becomes flesh in us if it could come spirit if it, he said my words are spirit in their life if, let's go on to this next section here uh, Jesus when he was being tempted he said uh, man shall not live by bread alone but every word word 
every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, Jesus' life source was the word. And he was the word that came down and became flesh to give us that example. Amen? So last week, we looked at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We found, we found it's, in, it's in Daniel chapter 3, verses 8 through 30. And we talked about in these three realms, there's three baptisms. There's a baptism in, in, in uh, the first one is the water baptism, which is not necessarily, uh, it, it's the symbol of the children of Israel coming through the Red Sea. We all get baptized into the body of Christ by the Spirit. Second baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's, a, a, that, that's a, 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 another, another relational that has to do with the three feasts that we talked about last week, the Passover, and then Pentecost, but the true, what, where he's taking us, where he wants us to go in the final account is taking us to tabernacles, where we tabernacle with him uh, in the word, in the truth, from heaven, from heaven. You know, we, we can uh, try to build a church or we can let the kingdom come. See, we're children of the kingdom. We're going to, we're going to see that in just a few minutes. We, we are children of the kingdom. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. So we're not trying to build a church. We're trying to release the kingdom on the earth. And sometimes it starts with Jerusalem. Sometimes it starts with Judea, the church around us, with the people who are around us. But that the point is, uh, it's not something. It's not a. It's not something we're, we see with our eyes that we're trying to build. We're building. We we are already built as the temple, as the, the dwelling place of God in the Spirit. We are the dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So He wants us to let that life. And, uh, and light come out of us from above out through uh, our soul and our flesh and he wants it to happen in our heart and our life first um, and so that's what we are so the, the, the three baptisms in our that we we talked about um, we it's a response to the word sown in our hearts these three these three uh, feasts that, that talk about these three baptisms uh, which one does this story illustrate? If we remember, they were thrown into the fiery furnace because they refused to bow down uh, and submit to an idol above, uh, that was not related to the truth, related to the word. So this is the baptism of fire. The baptism of fire is what I'm experiencing right now. I think that's what the body of Christ is experiencing right now. Because as you, real, as you see, the, the three Hebrew children, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were thrown into the fire, they were bound, see? Uh, a lot of us in this, it, it, we're, we're still living in this realm. Uh, in, we're trying to uh, enjoy, live in the freedom. Stand, we're trying to stand fast in the liberty in which Christ has made us free. Christ is the Word. The Word makes us free. The gospel of Jesus Christ, His power, makes us free. But we've still been somewhat bound in this area. We've been bound in this soul realm. And so that example of the, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went in there bound by the enemy. See, we're, the enemy is the one that's trying to bind us up and keep us from inheriting a hundredfold response to the word planted in our heart. Amen? He, want, he doesn't want us to understand that. And so we're going through, the church is going through this baptism of fire where we're being released. Everything, the only thing that burned in that fire was the things that were binding Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, and who was the fourth man in the fire with them? It was Jesus Christ. Jesus was in that fire. And see, he is working through this. He's the one, John the Baptist said that he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He didn't, he didn't say that they weren't the same thing. He wants to baptize us with the Holy Spirit to bring us into an understanding, a greater revelation of listening to the voice of the Spirit, which is the Word. And then having that change our, change our mind into the reality of our new sonship that we have and then bring us into the realm where we're no longer bound into that realm of thinking that is something that we have to do to make it all right, to make it good, either in a good way or we lose our uh, identity of what we've done wrong is limiting God in our life. Uh, so how much of the word do we want? How much, do, how much of the word do we want? I want to I wanna live in the hundredfold because Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The abundance of life comes with allowing uh, the percentage, the percentage of that word from heaven, Jesus Christ, falling on a heart, um, as he talks about in that parable. That parable. I want, I want our hearts. I want our hearts 
my, my desire is that our hearts would be receiving that hundredfold. Amen? Of the word. Now, uh, let me just give you a couple examples quickly. That When Peter walked on the water, so Jesus is the word. He came down, right? He came, the word became flesh. He came down. So when he, uh, when he saw Jesus, he said, uh, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come. And so Jesus said one word. What did he say? He said, come. So the power of Peter, Peter's power to walk on that water was determined by the word Jesus spoke, not by his faith. Now, see what, what happened was, and when he got when he walked out on the water based upon the word of Jesus, who is the word, who came down from the word, the word is that realm where heaven is. The word reigns supreme there. It's fixed, eternal. So Peter walked out based upon the word. But then he started looking, and then he started looking down. He looked at uh, the particles and the waves. Pardon the pun there. These are particles, these are waves. Uh, he looked at the waves. He began to look at the, you know, what was happening. And then he took his eyes off the word. The word was the power that caused him to be able to walk on that water. And so Jesus re rebuked him. He says, well, you know, what happened? You, you took your eyes off me. You took off, I'm the word. You took your eyes off the word. But he didn't rebuke. See, it, there's no condemnation to this. There's no condemnation because, see, Peter had a desire. He, he wanted to step out. And I want to step out. We want to step out. We all want to, we're all in this place of wanting to step out because all of creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. We're wanting to bear out of us the full reward of the word, Jesus Christ. Amen? And so, uh, I'm, let's see, what did... Uh, yeah, nothing can depend on me. That's good. Uh, Susan, it, nothing depend, nothing, nothing depended upon Peter walking on that water. It was all the word. It was all the word, and so, but but notice, uh, notice that he did not rebuke the other eleven disciples in the boat, because see, they didn't they were they didn't step out. They they were they were content to be in the boat, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, but I think, uh, you know, all of us are in our desire to walk in the fullness of the word. We're, we're, we're wanting to step out on the water, and the water is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is encouraging us to come. Come. Come in, 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 uh, to the full manifestation of this sonship, to the, to the word of God that abides forever. Uh, Jesus said in another place, uh, when the, the 5,000 were being fed, he said, um, he said, well, hey, hey, these people are hungry. And he says, well, uh, give them something to eat. That's the word. Jesus said, spoke the word, give them something to eat. And so um, the word spoke, and he's, he's with, from heaven, and he spoke something into existence just like he did when he said, let there be. And he spoke something that did not exist into existence. And see, that's, the, that's what, how the word that Jesus speaks works in our life as well. Uh, we're not limited. We're not limited in these lower two realms to whatever we see or whatever we feel. There's no limitation to that. We're, we're, our only limitation is in relationship to us receiving and believing the word from here, the settled word of God. In and it's not about our faith. When it becomes about our faith, then who gets the reward if it works? Who gets the condemnation if it doesn't work? Either we do or somebody else does. But when it's about the word, the word will produce some 30, some 60. You know, even let's take health, for example. I mean, there's if you're walking, if you're if you're if you're wanting to be, you know, be healthy, our the word is the is the ultimate answer. But some of us are some of us are looking for the answer in the particle realm. That's okay. We're still sons, we're still in Christ. Sometimes we need uh, you know, when you break your foot or whatever, you know, some people can say, well, the words heal me. Some people say, doctor, give me some drugs. It's okay. That's okay. We're, but we're still, we're still trying to walk in the, the, our, our, our fullness of, of revelation of the word is Jesus is our healer. Jesus has healed us. And so um, whatever realm that is, sometimes it can be in the soul realm that we, that we're, that we don't feel like we can 
get to, you know, uh, let that word have full reign in our life. But we're, that's where we're headed. See, we're headed for the fullness of the word having un, unfettered uh, freedom in our life. And that, and that comes from that baptism of fire. It comes from that example of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Jesus is with us in that fire. The Holy Spirit is burning off all that binds us, all that's kept, it, kept us bound by the enemy's uh, taunting and accusations and lies. So he's speaking, speaking lies that aren't in line with the word. See, truth is in line with the word. Jesus came to bring us grace and truth. So truth is always going to be in line with the word of Jesus. Uh, and so now, uh, uh, that's a couple examples I just wanted to give about that. Now, let's go to John chapter 6. Go over to John chapter 6. Another verse just came in my heart. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says that uh, he, Jesus upholds all things by the word of his power. And I'm telling you right, right now this morning, he's, he's upholding you by the word of his power. He's upholding you. You don't have to worry about trying to hold yourself up. Just lean on his everlasting arms because we have, we have a scriptural proof in, in Hebrews 1, 3 that he upholds all things by the word of his power. Uh, I think Colossians, I'm, I'm not sure, I think it's chapter 1 around verse 15, it says, that, uh, through him all things consist we have a consistency in him, our consistency, our, our fullness is in him, of his fullness we've all received, amen? John chapter 6, verse 63, uh, said that uh, it is the spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. And then look what, look what he says here, the words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. See, Jesus is the Word. He came down and became flesh. He manifested. And it's in, and through that, the words that Jesus was speaking is in accordance with what his Father was, was telling him. Amen? And so, uh, there's spirit in their life. Now, that, that verse is the first one in that third section of your notes there. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 15 uh, you can you can um, go over to first cha uh, first Corinthians chapter 15 uh, verse 45 it says uh, and so it is written I love that it's the word this is the word the first man Adam became a living being see we were we were born first of, from a living being his name was Adam uh, that was our first birth uh, but then it says the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. See, Jesus is the last Adam. There's nobody else coming down the pike. It's, it's, it's Jesus. Uh, because he, he made happen what couldn't be made happen by the flesh. Um, Romans chapter uh, 8 um, says that, um, let me get there. For what the, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. See, there's fear of death, and any time we're in fear, we're living, uh, in a, we're living believing a lie again. There's perfect, perfect love cast out fear, and it's not our, it's never going to be our perfect love for Him. It's always His perfect love for us. It says, for what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And on the account of sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. So um, Jesus became a life-giving spirit. And subsequently, that's how you... The, uh, Jesus is the word. He gives light and life through the gospel, through the good news of salvation through Jesus. Uh, and he's, he birthed us again from above. He's birthed us from above, causing us to become one spirit with him. He's a life-giving spirit. So everywhere we go now, we're like we, we we've been we've been made uh, uh, life giving spirits as well. We have the same Holy Spirit. We have Jesus living in us. So when we declare the word, the gospel, when we declare that word, 
then we become life-giving spirits as well. We, as well. we can either have people point them to the death that's engraved and living, uh, written on stones, or we can point them to pointing to the gospel, point to the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we do that, we become ministers of reconciliation, ministers of righteousness, and our spirits are are proclaiming the word, and that word causes others to become uh, their spirit to become spiritually alive as well. Uh, so that's our that's our inheritance. Uh, uh, we're one spirit with Him. Now we have we're life we have life going uh, giving spirits through His life in us. So it's His life in us is now producing the same thing. It produces after its kind. Uh, so you've been made alive by the Spirit of God. Amen. Now let's go to Galatians for just a minute. Galatians, Galatians chapter six. His, the Lord Jesus Jesus' faith which is what Paul the Apostle said um, that he was living by and that's what I want to live by see when he, living by Jesus' faith is, is because our confidence is in the word that he spoke just like the word he spoke he knew was, was from his father and so uh, I don't want to live any longer um, in the futility of my mind I don't want to live by my faith by my fasting, by my reading the word, uh, as far as make, trying to harvest something out of myself, I want it to be by the Spirit of God, by the Spirit of grace working in me. Amen? Uh, Galatians 6 verse 8 says, For he who sows to his flesh will, uh, will of the flesh reap corruption. And I always just think that was had to do with behavior. But what, what is in the, in the parable of the sower, what's being sown? So when you're sowing something, when you're trying to sow something to the flesh, it's always going to get corrupted. I don't care if it's if it's because this is all from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So we can sow whatever we want to try to sow, and there's some um, I mean there's some things that operate in these lower realms. I can go to the doctor and get a medication or something, or he can put a cast on my broken bone. And there's some there's some, uh, but ultimately if we're looking for that to be the the the, the substance of our life, the way we live, and that's our, where our confidence is, it's always going to cause corruption in our life. It's always going to either cause us to become prideful or become condemned because we're trying to make something happen in and of ourselves. But it says, uh, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So when we're sowing in this realm by the Spirit, see, it's, it's everlasting. Where it's all about eternal. It's all, not about temporary anymore. It's all about the eternal. Uh, and that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to sow to the Spirit. Romans chapter 7, verse 6, But now we have been delivered from the law, and that is both the law of sin and death and the law of Moses, uh, having died to what we were held by. How do we die to what we were being held by? Because we died with Christ. We were crucified with Christ, Paul said. It's no longer we that live, but Christ lives in us. And the life we now live in this flesh is by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave, us, gave himself for us. So uh, we died to what we were held by so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit. See, service should be coming out of identity, out, out of our, our revelation as sons of God. That's where the newness of the Spirit is and not in the oldness of the letter. Uh, so worship God from the chart again. Worship God. Uh, worship sons of God. Be be uh, uh, living from. We should be living from here, as sons. We should be living. This is where the Spirit is is uh, is where we sow in the newness of the Spirit. We know we we know that we have inherited all things through Jesus Christ. That's what we have. His word. We have His word. We agree together that this is where we sow. This is where we're sowing. We're sowing uh, from this area. The word is what we're sowing in our hearts. Uh, so we're, not, we're no longer going to be living from a bottom-up life. In Jesus' name, we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be living our life from above down. 
above, down, throughout Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost parts of the world. We, 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 let, let's let the word cause the possession of peace in our hearts. Let the word profit us a hundredfold. Let the baptism of fire be released in the church today that, that burns up the things that are binding us, that Jesus is in that fire with us, encouraging us to let go and let him live through, through us. He doesn't want us to be bound to these lower levels of life any longer. In Jesus' name, we just declare that's happening. And we're, we're, we're re releasing our, our, our mind to that renewal to what we possess. You already are conformed to the image of his son. So be transformed to that in the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. I like the fire there, Minda. That's a, I like that. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I did get my comments back up. It was so simple. All I had to do was sweep across the, to the left. It says sweep across the screen to the left and you get your comments back. So here we are. I get to see you actually making comments today. Praise the Lord. So uh, Jesus was tempted as we are. What was his temptation? Remember, the, the devil said, "Turn this these stones into bread." See, when we're when we're tempted to leave the word that we live by, that's that's permanent in heaven, and we start reverting back to the stones for our life. See, that's what the temptation is to go back and trying to get something from what we do, how we do it. Whether we do it right, whether we do it, and, and all of that, see, he wants the temptations the same. He wants us to, to, to turn, the, turn our bread into, to, uh, our stones into bread. He wants us to, to, to gain sustenance in our life by what we do. To, and Paul called those stones uh, the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones. The ministry of death, that's what the law was. But see, there was a temptation for Jesus to do the same thing, to reach out and take something he didn't already have. But praise God, he believed he, he was God's beloved son. He went into the wilderness with that understanding of identity and sonship. Mm -hmm. So he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, his, his focus was on word. That's the power of the heavenly realm, is word. He didn't need to gain anything else by his, uh, his doing. He already had everything he needed. Uh, now, uh, let's, look at, uh, let's look at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew 11. So I hope, th I hope after today's message that you, know, that you have a little better understanding of of getting into the word see, I, 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 now my hunger and, uh, and thirst uh, it's a better word amen Cora it's a better word uh, so it, it's it's the word it's the word uh, and our response is a hundredfold to that spirit and life that comes through the word spirit and life Jesus said my words are spared in their life amen uh, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. See, the word is what he sent, Jesus Christ. And that's what heals us from our destructions. See, the enemy is the destroyer. The healer is Jesus and the word. The word is the healer. The word is not my, the, the healing is not my fasting. It's not my uh, determination to, to have my faith be strong enough to make it happen. No, as a child, I simply believe the word because the word is settled in heaven. And, and again, there's no condemnation to wherever we are. I mean, we may be in the, the physical realm, we may be in the soul realm, we may, be, uh, we may still be 30, some 60, some 100, but the, the, the prodding of the Holy Spirit is to bring us into this hundredfold. And we're, our source is the word. Our source is not our faith, amen? It's his faith, working by his love. Perfect love casts out the fear that we don't deserve it. We, we never did deserve it to begin with. But by grace, we received it, all of it, by grace. And that's the thing is, is the soul becomes free when you realize that you can't, you can't earn it, you can't pay for it, you can't disqualify, and you can't qualify. That's the burning. That's the binding the enemy wants to think is, is keeping you from inheriting. But our inheritance is ours because of the word. Jesus Christ. Amen. 
So Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Uh, Jesus said this, uh, Assuredly I say to you, among those born of women, there has not been not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now I want to, I just want to point this out. First John two sixteen. Yeah, about the temptations. Yeah, that's good. I love I love being able to see the comments again. I've really missed this. Uh, but in, in surely I say to so. Uh, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he, because see you don't you 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 don't you we don't earn our sonship. We're birthed into it. So we have it by inheritance. So anybody that's been born from above, and I, I want to just make sure you understand that Matthew uses a terminology a little bit different than Luke. We're going to see Luke here in a second. Matthew says kingdom of heaven. Luke says kingdom of God. The reason for that is nothing where there's a big difference between all of this and you've got to juggle and, and you know, teach about it and all that. It's the same thing. The kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of God. But the reason Matthew doesn't use kingdom of God is because to the Jewish audience he was writing to, you couldn't use God's name written. You couldn't write his name. So he, he in, in, everywhere where it talks about kingdom, he's talking about the kingdom of heaven because he couldn't put in words to the Jews and have them receive it, the word God written down. And so that's the only distinction. It's the same thing. It's the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, now, uh, let's look at, let's go to Luke now. Luke chapter 17. Luke 17. We're going to go back to Matthew here in just a minute. I just feel the Holy Spirit saying, uh, let me see if I can read that. Uh, my... Yeah, I can't I can't make that out for sure, but I'll I'll look at it later, Susan. Uh, thank you all for the comments. Um, I've got the sun shining and, the, and I'm trying to read small print there. And, but uh, anyway, uh, Luke chapter 17, starting with verse 20. Uh, now, when they were now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered and said to them, "The kingdom of God does not come." by observation we're not going to say we're not going to see the kingdom of God come okay there here it comes see we're the new Jerusalem that's coming down from heaven see we're we're we're, we're the city of, of God we're from heaven coming down as is as, as the new Jerusalem but it's not going to come by observation it's not like some physical thing that we're seeing with our eyes uh, but look look what he says here uh, nor will they say see here or see there for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. See, the kingdom of God is within you. And our, our part uh, in this process is, is to bring, allowing the kingdom to come out of us into, into our realm. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the outer part, outermost parts of the world. He wants the word, the word uh, to, to have this place in us where the kingdom uh, which is in us begins to be displayed. We're not interested in trying to build, okay, the kingdom, the kingdom's there in that building over there. That's where the kingdom is in that building. When I walk in that building, that's when the kingdom's going to come. That's where the open heaven is. The, going over to this place over here, that's where the open heaven is. See, the enemy wants to make you feel that because there, there may be some truth that you could, that, that may be scriptural in that soul realm. But that's not the essence. That's not where we, as sons, that's not where we're operating from. We're not trying to get an open heaven. The open heaven is in us. Because Jesus was the veil torn to give us access to heaven. And so we come, we, you know, uh, one of the, one of the uh, Jesus said the angels are going to be descending uh, on the Son of Man. And he's, they still are. The, the, the angels are descending, it says in Hebrews, that they're descending upon the Word. They're not, just, they're not descending on your faith or your special uh, anointing or whatever. They're, it's the, the angels are descending upon Jesus today, the Word. He's the Word that became flesh. His Word lives in us. He lives in us. We're one spirit with Him. So the angels are descending upon the Word. 
they're ministering spirits, to, to, spirits to, to, to serve those that, that have obtained salvation. So it's not about us. It's, it's, uh, we all, m most of us have actually had inter uh, entertained angels unaware. So um, there's a couple of times where I feel like I knew they were, uh, were they, who they were. Uh, but that doesn't matter. But it's, not, it's not about that. It's about the word. Now look at, uh, oops, I've got to go back to my notes here. Uh, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Uh, the power of the word of God, the living God in heaven, the power of that word is in you. And just like that song I keep listening to over and over again, so what we're supposed to be doing is letting it, letting it be. As it is in heaven, let it be in us. Let it, be in, in, let it be in Jerusalem, let it be in Judea, let it be in Samaria, let it be in the outer parts of the world. Let your kingdom come and your will be done here as it is in heaven. That's the kingdom that lives in you. That's the kingdom expression is let your will be done, Lord, as it, on, on this earth through us, your temple, um, as it is in heaven. Amen? Now, uh, let's, let's look at this. I want you to see this because I want you to have, a, I want you to have this revelation um, about this because this word is so important. This word is so important because it is the essence of, of heaven. It's the, the word is, is the, the essence of heaven. Uh, bringing the kingdom. <clears throat> okay, let's go back to Matthew chapter 13. This is going to be our last passage of scripture this morning. Matthew chapter 13. <clears throat> Those of you that, that know me, I'm not, I'm not a person that, that is, was ever, you know, supposed to be uh, in public speaking or, or getting up. In fact, I know Susan has done, I mean, there's everyone that's, that's been in a position where they've given a message. Before you, you stand up, you're, there's, a, there's always this, this feeling that you're, you know, the enemy's trying to, he, he, he's trying to mess with you about walking into this place of, of just declaring the word, becoming an oracle of God and the Holy Spirit. You know, it, it, it's, it's just awesome to be able to stand in, in, in the word giving us power to express the kingdom. Amen? It's so wonderful. So look at, look at Matthew chapter uh, 13. Uh, Matthew chapter 13. The sun just went behind the clouds, so my light went away a little bit. Uh, chapter uh, 13, verse 23. Uh, but he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it who indeed hears bears fruit and pro produces some a hundredfold some sixty and some thirty so the good ground is the heart that receives the implanted word. You can back up into that, uh, this one in another place over in Matthew, you can talk about the, 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 the ground that wasn't good where this, this, the word could not take root. It could not produce. But the word produces in the heart when it's received, when it's believed. Because Jesus is the word, just like we said in, in John chapter one. Uh, he was the word. Um, and we're born of him. We're born of that word. We're born of, uh, from above. Now, I want you to see this. Uh, now go down, go to verse 33. Another, word, another parable he spoke to them, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, uh, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leaven. <laughs> Don't you love, I just love these parables when you really see the word when you see the, the, the desire of, of, of this word to manifest, uh, to manifest in us, in this good soil of our heart receiving Jesus, the gospel, the, the gospel of our salvation, the word, God's word on it, uh, how it fits into every, in every way. Okay, the three, uh, it says the uh, three measures of meal till it was all measured. See, 30 60, 100. So see, we're, we're trying to leaven these three. That we're, we're, we're leavening the, tr the word is bringing forth 30, then 60, then 100. See, we're le we're, the leavening of our life, body, soul, and spirit, really, we're, we're letting the leaven come from the spirit, soul, and, and body. 
but that that illustration there is the three measures are these three realms of our life he wants the he wants the word to produce uh, this this kingdom to produce in us uh, as we're leavening as we're bringing the word the revelation of the word by the spirit into these three areas of our life he wants that until it's all leavened, until it's a hundredfold. Isn't that amazing? That's what that's what that's what Jesus is saying. This is in red here. Amen. Now go to verses 37 and 38. Uh, he answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. Because see, Jesus is the Word who became flesh. He's the Word. Heaven, the the, the substance of heaven is the Word. And Jesus was that word with God from the beginning. And he became flesh and dwelt among us. So he who sows the, the good seed is the Son of Man. See, he's sowing good seed everywhere. The only thing that, that's keeping the seed from producing is the soil. He wants, God's not, he wants, he's not willing that any should perish and that all would come to the knowledge of the truth. So he wants, it's not, a, it's not about God it's about the, the resistance to receiving the word. And there's various things he said that cause that soil to not produce. Yeah. But look at that uh, in uh, verse 37. Okay, uh, 38. The field is the world. The good seeds are the, are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. So uh, you become... Uh, the sons of the kingdom by the good seed that's planted in your heart. See, when that good seed enters your heart, you're baptized into the body of Christ. Then you're baptized in the, by the Holy Spirit. And then, you're, then, you, then you have a baptism of fire. And then, again, you don't have to have all three, but you're still a sons of the kingdom. And so why not let us express as sons of the kingdom, the full measure uh, and full stature of the body of Christ. Why not have it be uh, the hundredfold? Why not let the word uh, have full course in our life? Amen. Let, why not let the word be the power, uh, which is Jesus. Let that be the power that will change in our soul and in our body. Uh, then uh, verse, uh, and, uh, and let's go to the last one is Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Back up to verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart, this is Jesus, from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you have heard from me, the promise of the Holy Spirit. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit and not many days from now. Therefore, when he come, they come together, they ask him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of, to Israel? And he said to them, It's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, in you, and you shall be witnesses to me. You'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so... Uh, I just I just pray this morning, Lord, that you would give us a, an, a greater revelation and understanding of your word. That your word is the essence of, of heaven, and and that essence was placed in a, in a human flesh uh, by in the name in, in Jesus' name. He came into this world. The word became flesh, and this kingdom is being established. Your kingdom is being established by that good seed. What you said, uh, the, the, the good seed, um, let me get back to that because I want to say it the right way. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. So Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit this morning, is sowing um, the good seed, the gospel, the word from heaven 
And that word wants to wants to be what we live by. We live by every word that's spoken by the by the, the, the mouth of God. Jesus has expressed everything that the Father has said to us. Uh, he sent his word and healed us. He sent his word to heal us and to deliver us from all our destruction. And so, Lord, we just thank you for the revelation of your word. We thank you for that revelation. Um, and we thank you that, that, it, that it falls in our hearts, it falls on good ground. It falls, and, and we desire to have a hundredfold expression of the good seed that's sown in, in our hearts as part of your kingdom let your kingdom come through us let your will be done uh, according to your word according to your word let it be done in us and our our part is to let that let that be let the kingdom come don't try to make it come let it come from above down inside and out amen that's what that's what the that's what the simplicity of the gospel is about that's what the freedom is of new of being a new co in a new covenant relationship with him the power is his the working is his the willingness is his the good seed is the is the word and it and we just want it to have free course in our lives and then through our lives in jesus name that's what we want let's take communion together Just so thankful this morning for the promise that Jesus said if you if you eat my flesh and you drink my blood you have life you have his life in us and so we're just so thankful that God Jesus is seated in heavenly places um, far above everything else he is the word um, and and the essence of his body and his blood is a power source that comes from the realm that we now live in and and Interestingly enough, see, he, he wants this to come from above, but the reality of it is, is from heaven, and he wants that to come into our soul realm and into our body. So in, in, a, in a sense, he wants us to taste and see. He wants us to, to, to have it as an understanding in our spirit man, uh, where we're seated with him, have it as an understanding of our soul that, that his sacrifice causes our souls to be, our soul realm to be, to, he, to be healed, uh, to be completed, to be at rest, to be at peace. Um, and he wants our bodies to come in line with the word. He wants our bodies to come in line. And it's okay. It doesn't matter where we are. Uh, the, the power of this is what takes us from where we are to where he wants us to be. Amen? That's what he wants. He wants this, the power to be this truth of his word, not the, the way we do it, the way we do it not about the way we're doing this it's the power of the word that goes with this the promise of the word that goes with this uh, and we have the promise of the father living in us to confirm this truth to us so lord spirit soul and body we just receive the power of your word concerning your blood and your body we thank you for the word that jesus became flesh for us he became everything that we were he took our everything that was destructive in our body and he took it into his body and he put it away and we were crucified with him uh, buried with him raised with him and seated with him we, we recognize all those stages we were co-crucified with him so thank you lord for, for for sending your word and healing us and delivering us from all our destructions your words coming down as as we pray right now as we speak truth over this this Communion. This is co-union with him. Communion. Our co-union with him. We thank you, Lord, for letting that word be established in our in our minds and let it be established in our bodies. And we just rest in that truth. We just rest in it. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for the that this is just this isn't just uh, we have your word on it, the word of the new covenant. The power of your blood, which is actually was put on the mercy seat in heaven. See, that's why the source of this power comes from the word, comes from the realm of heaven. And 
we're allowing, we're bringing it into the realm of our soul and our body right now, Lord. We just thank you for the for the reality and the promise of this new covenant. As we partake of your blood, we're bringing we're drinking life into us. The the, the good seed is being planted in in good hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Deborah, did you have something? Okay. Uh, sons of God, daughters of God, our, our restful increase comes by just allowing the kingdom to come through us. And I just, I just believe this week as you get a greater revelation of the word, um, power, the power of the word, that you will just, that you will allow that um, that truth to be uh, more greatly revealed in you and the restful increase comes by him and him alone it has nothing to do with what we add to it other than our agreement uh, well Deborah has a has something she didn't have something now she has something but that's the way the Holy Spirit works amen so she's going to speak uh, give you something here and then I'll, I'll close after that hey good morning everyone um, what I just wanted to share is the scripture, the word. Um, and what I saw was like tread marks from a tire. And sometimes we feel like, um, like, like we're being run over, like we are bearing the weight. But the scripture, and I want to remind you of the scripture, Isaiah 53, uh, starting with verse 3, He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Verse 4, Surely he has borne. See, we're not bearing it. He has borne our griefs. And that word griefs in the Hebrew translates to sicknesses. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded. See, he was wounded. We're not wounded. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was, he was the one that was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed and i just in verse 7 says he was oppressed and he was afflicted beloved you're not going to bear it because jesus bore it for you receive that today we don't carry it because he carried it receive your freedom today amen amen Amen. That's a good word. Thank you. And I, I just, you know, as she was saying that, I just I was thinking again about the fact that he was bruised for our iniquities. Uh, and iniquity has to do with who we are. It's that shame thing in our life. That That's something inside that, that sometimes you can't see even though that bruising is there. So he was bruised for, the, for our shame, to take away our shame. And I just think it's so important for him, for, for, for his word, his life to have free course in us to remove as the baptism of the fire remove that remove that uh, that we've been bound by that shame which is a, which is a, an indication or our idea of who we are not what we do sin is what we do shame is based upon who we think we are and I believe he's gonna I believe the Holy Spirit based on that word that she just spoke I believe the, the Holy Spirit is breaking that through the fact that he took that iniquity he was bruised he was bruised inwardly for our shame and we just thank you lord for that we thank you for it we enjoyed uh we'll give you a, we'll get that word that we'll get the notice out about the times that we're meeting again we'll send it out by email and let everybody know the last the not next not next sunday which is father's day but the following sunday we'll be meeting at the comfort suites in uh, Webster, right down the road where we've met a couple of times before. Um, and so for those that would like to come, we look forward to seeing y'all in person. We'll still be doing the live stream. So if you don't feel like it's safe to get out, that's okay. But we thank you for those that are watching uh, by in other places of the country. We just appreciate um, 
and the ability to come into your home. And we, we know the ones that I'm seeing today, most of you I know, we, we, we've had you actually live in our services. And so that makes it just so much more joyful to realize that there has been some relationship built there. And we're just thankful. We're still praying for y'all that, that you'll have uh, places that you can go and fellowship with others that around this message of his grace, the, the, the ministry of his grace and the good news of the gospel. And so we're praying about that for y'all as well. But in the meantime, we're thankful that you can come and join us and be together. So we'll see you next week. And again, we'll put out all this information on uh, uh, as we get that uh, uh, on an email or whatever. We'll put it down in a written form so you can have it with you. All right. Well, God bless y'all. We love y'all. Y'all have a wonderful week. Um, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you next Sunday.